Okay, so let's see if you can figure out this basic math problem that has to do with fractions. Of course, fractions are extremely important when learning basic mathematics, but the question is the following. Can you write a fraction that expresses how much of this box is shaded? Okay, so that is the question. Do not use a calculator. But uh, we need to make a couple quick assumptions here. We have to just assume that this is a square, and inside the square are little equal distance uh, squares. In other words, all these squares are the same size inside of this bigger square. All right, so that's the question. Again, do not use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll show you exactly how to answer this question. This is not that difficult. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, you want to uh, write a fraction that represents uh, how much of this box is shaded. Let's go and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is 3 eighths. All right, now how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. You can tell your friends and family that indeed you still remember how to do basic fractions. And uh, you know, they probably won't be that impressed uh, with that. But uh, for some of you, I think this is very impressive because a lot of you may have been out of school 10, 20, maybe 50 plus years. And if you've been away from basic math for a while, you tend to forget a lot of things. So if you didn't get this problem right, uh, definitely don't feel bad. My videos are not designed to make anyone feel bad. So let's just go ahead and review this stuff. I'm pretty sure all of you um, out there will be like, oh yes, I remember this way back from 1972 or something like that. For me, it was like 1970, well, I would probably say 1975, 1976. All I remember is that my first grade teacher was smoking uh, right outside the classroom. I think we were probably giving her a tough time. Anyways, I digress, but let's go ahead and get into the problem. All right, so we are talking about fractions. And in simplest terms, a fraction is a representation where we want to kind of express a part out of a whole, okay? Let me go ahead and give you a, a, a little bit easier example than uh, this right here. Let's think about a pizza because who does not like pizza? And we're gonna split this pizza up in four ways. I know those are pretty big slices, but uh, uh, this is uh, gonna make my example a lot easier. Okay, now let's uh, say that you're going to get one slice out of this four uh, slices in this entire pizza, what would be the fraction that you can write here? How much of this friction, or how much of this uh, pizza, excuse me, are you going to get? Well, you would get one out of a total of how many? Well, one, two, three, four. So the whole, there is four slices total, and you're gonna get one part out of the entire uh, four slices. Okay, so the correct fraction here would be one fourth. Now that fraction, also has a decimal equivalent. If you take one and divide it by four, let's suppose in your calculator, but most of you probably know that's 0.25 as a decimal, and you can even turn this thing into a percent by multiplying by uh, 100, and that's 25%. So you would get 25% of the pizza, or one fourth of the pizza, or 0.25 of the pizza. Okay, so real simple numbers, and I uh, suspect most of you out there are like, yes, I know that stuff, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Let's proceed with this problem. I hear you, let's go ahead and figure this out. All right, so what we wanna do here is again, we wanna write a fraction that represents uh, how much of this box is shaded. So we need to figure out what part of the box is shaded. So how can we do that? Well, intuitively, you're probably saying, well, should we just count up how many of these boxes are shaded? Uh, you would be absolutely right. But then again, too, we need to figure out uh, how many total boxes we have. Okay, so let's go and do that right now. All right, so let's just uh, start off with how many total boxes we have. So we can see we have one, two, three, four, uh, you know, uh, rows here, or columns, excuse me, and we have four rows. So we have four by four, four rows, four columns. Pretty easy to uh, determine that we have 16 total little boxes here, or four times four. So that's our total, 16. 
So how many of these boxes are shaded? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six are shaded. So what do you think we're gonna do next? Well, if you're thinking that we're gonna uh, express these two numbers, the total and the part as a fraction, well, you would be absolutely correct. So let's go ahead and take that next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. I teach from basic math, like what I'm talking about here, to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. And each one of these videos, uh, you know, for me is a labor of love. So it doesn't make a difference what level of math you're at. If you're interested in learning mathematics, you know, what you need is hopefully a teacher that doesn't bore you to death. I know I'm talking right now and you're probably saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're doing what you always do. You're boring to me to death. Just get back to the prom. Stop with your little commercial. Well, listen, this little commercial is how, you know, I keep this channel going. So please consider subscribing. It's so easy. Just hit that little button. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit that notification button as well so you can get my latest videos. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and finish up this little problem. Okay, so here's our fraction. So we are thinking in terms of part out of the whole, okay? So how, uh, what part of this big box, okay, how many of these little squares were shaded? Well, that would be six. And how many uh, total boxes do we have? That would be 16. So you want to express that fraction six over 16. Now, if you had this as your answer, I would give you like an A, but maybe like an A minus because you always want to simplify fractions, okay? You never want to uh, leave a fraction like this, 500 over 1,000. Your math teachers are not going to really like that too much, and they will deduct points from you. But in mathematics, simplifying uh, values, okay, is not really like optional, okay? It's, it's almost like uh, a requirement, right? So even though this value is the same as uh, 1 half, in mathematics, if you leave it, this is basically incomplete work. So remember, when you're dealing with fractions, always get in the habit of simplifying or reducing fractions. So here, our fraction reduced is uh, 3 eighths. Now let's just suppose, okay, you were like, well, how do you, uh, you know, um, reduce a fraction? So some of you just intuitively can say, well, you know, this is equal to one half, but really what's going on here, just a real fast review, because we are talking about basic math. So what's going on when we are reducing a fraction is the following. So let's think of six, uh, let's think of six in terms of a product. How about maybe like three times two, okay? Three times two. And now let's think of eight as a product, okay? How about maybe eight times two? All right, so eight times two is, I'm sorry, 16 as eight times two and six as three times two. Because what's going on when you are uh, reducing or simplifying a uh, fraction is really you're thinking about the factors of the respective numerator and denominator and you're on the lookout for like factors, okay? Things that are separated by multiplication are factors, okay? So if I can find the same factor in the numerator and denominator, I could cross cancel these and what is left is the simpler version of that fraction. Okay, so that's really what's going on here. So of course that is three eighths. All right, now if some of you are saying, yes, I know this stuff, Mr. YouTube Math Man, but uh, you know, basic math, that it's been a while. Well, listen, I have the perfect little course uh, for you. Actually, I have two courses uh, for those of you out there that want to learn foundational basic mathematics. Or maybe you want to kind of relearn math, but you have to start with the basics, which of course is a good idea. So in the description, you'll see two courses. The first is uh, my Math Foundations course. It's a, basically a three chapter little mini course all about basic math. I cover fractions, percent, place value, order of operations, decimals. I mean, you'll get really up to speed on all the stuff that you forgot way back in elementary and primary school. But this stuff is critical, okay, for you to build, you know, um, you know, additional math skills. So if you want to go beyond basic math and maybe learn algebra, geometry, and some basic trigonometry, well, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I teach you everything in this course. In, in, um, in Math Skills Rebuilder, I teach you everything in the Foundations course, but I teach you more stuff as well. So those are two options for you. If you want to learn, you know, or get my best complete full instruction, because basically uh, the way you don't want to learn math is by just watching a tutorial here, a tutorial there, a little video here, a little video there. I mean, that's okay, but there's going to have to come a period of time 
you know, if you really are serious about improving in math, learning math, you do need, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, formal instruction, like a complete lesson. Then you need to have a variety of practice problems so you can build up your skills. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.